Good Thursday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Market Intel Brief here at Topkin Options. My name is Matthew Buckley. My call sign is Wiz. And wow, what a great day so far. Looking at a uh, $1,500 profit, 74%. Uh, $1,500 profit on a sniper shot that we took this morning in our accelerated uh, retirement brief. And check out this trade that we put on one week ago, a bearish trade on the S&P 500. It is up 75% or $7,000 in a week. We did that trade last Thursday. It's up seven grand. Seven grand, look at this, 8,500 bucks. How, what do we do a month to date? Month to date, we are looking at in this portfolio, over $19,000. Look at that. In uh, mainly S&P 500, what I call sniper shots, right? Take a look at the S&P right now and look at what it's doing today. You can, it, this is like shooting fish in a barrel, man. Let's take a look at the day chart. Look at this. Look at the range it's trading in, man. You sell a bear call spread up here. You put on a bull put spread down there. You sell a bear call spread up here. Maybe you put on a bull put spread right here. Although mid-afternoon, a little dangerous doing that out here. Now it's time to take some profits and grab some popcorn as we might like kind of sell off into the close here. But look at that, man. This is like shooting fish in a barrel. I teach you how to do this here at Topkin Options. What are you waiting for? We printed money uh, recently when we had this rip your face off rally through the 200-day moving average on Jerome Powell being dovish? Eh, I don't know if he was too dovish last week. And then the market waking up a day or two later going, yeah, you didn't sound too dovish. Maybe that was hawkish. Slam, right? Just like over here. I told you to copy and paste what happened over here to here. Why? Look, rip your face off rally through the 50-day, kind of hang out. Rip your face off rally to the 100-day, kind of hang out. Rip your face off rally to the 200, and then massive failure. We did the exact same thing over here, folks, and we are printing money. If you would have liked to have made, what, eight grand uh, in the past week, you're welcome. And you should be here at Top Gun Options. Let me give you a quick Intel brief because waking up this morning, spitting out my coffee all over my laptop uh, with this ridiculous bullshit. Um, so Joe Biden today did a prisoner swap for a massive arms dealer. This guy's call sign is the Merchant of Death. So we let him go in exchange for a basketball player who loves weed and breaking laws in other countries. That's the deal we got. According to some of my guys who work in a big five-sided building up uh, in D.C. said, yeah, Putin really, really wanted the Merchant of Death, the international arms dealer, to help him with the war in Ukraine. So let's get this straight. We got a female basketball player who really doesn't like this country in exchange for the merchant of death to go kill more people. Are you fucking insane? Are you insane? Oh, and who did Joe Biden leave behind? A United States Marine. Uh, first of all, U.S. News and World Report, there is no such thing as an ex-Marine. He is a Marine. Look at this guy, folks. What? What? I, I, I can't even, I, I, I can't. Meet Brittany Grenier and Marine Paul Whelan. Both are Americans. Both were convicted in Russia courts on dubious charges. Both serving multi-year sentences in Russia. Brittany hates America. Paul served America. Guess which one Biden traded to set a terrorist free? Are you kidding me, folks? If you don't know who Paul Whelan is, let me tell you. He was a cop. For 15 years. He enlisted in the Marines in 1994. He served in combat in 2004. He's literally an American hero. He's a businessman. He was in Russia. They arrested him for espionage. He's like, what are you talking about? He's been in jail ever since. This is disgusting. This is like Barack Hussein Obama getting a Bo Bergdahl free. A traitor. A deserter. Guys in his platoon who went looking for that guy, one guy died and the other's a quadriplegic. I, 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 it, yeah. <sighs> calm blue ocean, calm blue ocean. It's just, it's gross. It's awful. Vladimir Putin gets a great PR victory. I thought he was actually Hitler. I thought he was Satan and he's a murderer and a, and a war criminal. He probably is. He is all of those things, but isn't it weird? Isn't it weird? So there's your, your daily dose of the Biden administration just shitting all over uh, normal people. Um, 
in disgusting Maxine Waters news, there's Maxine Waters, you know, the head of the, uh, you know, Congress uh, Finance Committee. Oh, there she is with her big Democratic donor, Sam Bankman fraud. He gave, allegedly, so the small number is $40 million to the Democrats, right? He's the number two donor in the last election cycle behind George Soros. This guy, whose money did he use to donate to Democrats? Uh, customers, little old ladies in tennis shoes, Elon Musk. That's the public number. His actual support of demo elections is probably over a billion dollars. So... Is Maxine Waters, the chairwoman of the House Finance Committee, compelling him to testify with a subpoena? No. But she tweeted this morning after a massive, following a tidal wave of disgust, outrage, and loathing at corrupt politicians. That, that's nothing new. This morning, she's like, well, because CNBC reported accurately yesterday that she's not going to subpoena the guy. Let's subpoena Roger Stone and uh, Bannon and all those folks, right? I can't stand any of those people, folks, to be honest with you. But the point is this. The hypocrisy is disgusting. These Democrats throw subpoenas out like they're Doritos. A guy who just ripped off $35 billion who should be in jail, Maxine Waters. Well, um, if it, you know, I, I, maybe, right? A subpoena is definitely on the table. Stay tuned. You're a coward and you're a fraud, Maxine Waters. You're a disgrace, how much money did you get from this guy? This is just this is this is America, folks. Take a look at the video of her right here blowing him a kiss. She blows the man a kiss. That's where we are in this country, folks. You steal billions and billions of dollars. Nothing will happen to you if you're a Democrat donor. Oh, and by the way, in other awful news, where'd my money go? The Pentagon, the Department of Defense, for the fifth time in a row, failed their audit. You know how much money the Pentagon can't account for? $2.2 trillion. So around the same time your government comes out and tells you that we can't find in the Department of Defense $2.2 trillion in equipment, is that around the same time the IRS reached out to all of us and said what? If you sent more than $600 on a Venmo transaction, you better report it. You can't make this shit up, folks. 87 new IRS agents. Nice job. You voted for a Democrat? I hope you get audited first. 87 new IRS employees looking into your Venmos. But the Pentagon, 2.2 trillion bucks. Eh. They need to enforce stricter tax stuff to pay for all this stuff. <laughs> Zelensky ain't paying this on his own, folks. You got to pay for the war in Ukraine. It's a disgrace, man. Today, I, this is why I had to do an, an intel brief today, because this is just, it, it's awful. What's going on in this country is an absolute disgrace. We leave a Marine behind, which is kind of standard SOP uh, for the Biden administration, leaving Americans behind, especially service personnel, uh, in exchange for a basketball plan. And, and it's so funny. The lady admitted, she's like, yeah, I smoke weed, and yeah, I brought it in, in the country. It wasn't planted. It was all this other stuff turned out all to be false, right? But you know what? I will cut her some slack because she's not used to being in a country that enforces its own laws. So, you know, there's that as well. She completely believes she could get away with it. So a Marine who served his country and also a police officer in Michigan, stuck in Russia, and we got her instead. Now, if Brittany had any balls, she would have pulled a John McCain. She would have said, you know what? No, thank you. I'm not going to be released until he goes with me. That would have been a baller move, young lady. But it's all about you, isn't it? Wonder, are you going to stand for the national anthem next time? Or are you still going to still going to pull your weak ass shit? It's a disgrace. You can dislike this country. You can badmouth it. You can MF it. You can get in trouble overseas, and the Biden administration is going to come after you. You can be a former Marine and a cop, and we're going to leave you. And don't give me any of this bullshit like, oh, well, you know, it's different rules. Uh-uh. I would have said, I'm not taking her. I want both of them. And I would have said it publicly. But that takes leadership, right? But, you know, there's, there's Joe Biden. And, you know, before I came on air here, it actually kind of dripped out that uh, MBS is actually behind the deal to the prisoner swap here. <sighs> anyway, 
Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? Great looking trades. I'm loving this stuff. Sniper uh, bull put spread today. Did we get filled on Exxon? I don't think I got filled on Exxon. Did a uh, look to do a bull put spread on Exxon, and I did not get filled yet. Why is that canceled? I didn't cancel that. All right, well, I'm trying to get filled on. All right, I'll put this back on. Trying to get filled on a bull put spread uh, out to January 6th, the anniversary of something that was worse than uh, 9-11 and Pearl Harbor. The vice president, Democrats lately have told me what? January 6th. December 7th, 9-11, the most horrific events in our nation's history. Excuse me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you believe that? Some Democrats actually say it's worse, right? January 6th was an insurrection from Americans, at least December 7th. And 9-11 were attacks from an outside enemy. This was an enemy. 6,000-ish Americans dead from Pearl Harbor to 9-11? One American, an unarmed female Air Force veteran, shot dead on January 6th by an African-American police officer, right? We don't, we don't hear any of that stuff, right? Re reverse the colors and, and see if you'd hear anything. I'm, I'm sick of it, guys. This is, we really are getting to close to the point uh, of no return. Oh, maybe that's why. I got to go put this in a different portfolio. All right, I got to get going. Uh, good stuff. Uh, have a go. Oh, uh, make sure you listen to the Max After Murder podcast, episode 47. Bart's new call sign, Moses. Yep, Bart's out there talking to burning bushes after doing his medicine experience. You can listen to that on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeart, Spotify with me and Joe Rogan. Or you can, uh, I actually posted this on the Topkin Options uh, YouTube channel. You can see the video of, of Bart and I doing uh, our podcast in a from last week. It's right over here. So go take a look at that. Max After Murder Podcast, episode 47. Bart's new call sign, Moses. Have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge. God bless. Fights on. And namaste.